Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. As longtime subscribers here know online, <clears throat> I sometimes give my opinion on famous criminal cases or cases that are in the news. For example, here on YouTube, you'll find videos where I make the argument that the person accused of killing Annie Dewani is, in fact, guilty, in my opinion. Right? I make the argument that Reuben Hurricane Carter, in my opinion, is likely guilty. I make the argument that Oscar Pistorius, again, in my opinion, is guilty. Amanda Knox, in my opinion, guilty. Let's take a look at a famous case arising out of Oregon. It's the May 19, 1983 murder case involving Diane Downs, who remains incarcerated and who to this day continues to claim her innocence. Right now, let's go back to that day. Let's talk about the crime. Let's talk about the evidence. Right, a car is seen driving on Old Mohawk Road at between 5 and 7 miles per hour. The car behind it is frustrated. Right, the driver claims his pedometer needle can barely get off the post. Right, the car eventually makes it to the hospital. <clears throat> the windows are soaked in blood. A blonde woman jumps out and yells that her kids have been shot. Three kids are in the car. Right? They have all been shot at relatively close range. The woman herself is shot in her forearm and has a broken bone. One kid doesn't make it. As the kids are hospitalized at the hospital and are recovering, the woman goes to visit her eight-year-old daughter. The hospital staff notices that when the woman approaches the daughter, the daughter gets anxious and has a raised heartbeat. Right? That's actually picked up by the hospital machinery. One kid doesn't make it. Right? The other kid Right, the daughter recovers but suffers a stroke during her recovery. The third kid, the son, makes it but is paralyzed. Right now, the mother claims that as she was driving on Old Mohawk Road, she noticed a guy on the side of the road who looked helpless, who waved down the car. Right? This guy looked like he was in need of help. She pulls the car over and gets out of the car to see what the matter is. An altercation ensues. The guy, a white male with long hair, then leans in the car, sees her kids, who, depending on reports, are either sleeping or are pretending to be asleep. The stranger takes out a gun and shoots the three kids. Right? Diane Downs is panic. She's outside the car and she's helpless. She pretends to throw her car keys away, right, because she feels this is a carjacking. The assailant then turns toward her. Somewhere in the interaction, he shoots her in the forearm, right? She then is able to outthink him, maneuver her way back into the vehicle, when she, according to her version, frantically drives to the hospital to save her kids' lives. Right? Now, understand that's different than the prosecution's theory of the case. 
The prosecution's theory of the case is that Diane Downs killed her children so that she could convince her married boyfriend to leave his wife for her. Right? The boyfriend did not want kids. So according to the prosecution, Diane Downs is on Old Mohawk Road after having visited a friend to discuss a horse deal. Right? The friend wanted to buy a horse. Diane Downs had information about a horse that was available for sale that she gleaned from some publication. Right? So now she's driving back on Old Mohawk Road. And according to the prosecution, she pulls the car over to the side of the road, takes out a twenty-two, and calmly shoots each of her three kids. Right? There's blood splatter everywhere in the car, except in the driver's seat. The gunshot on her forearm is not from the outside. It's not a defensive wound. It's not like she has her hand up and she gets shot here. Rather, they determine the shot is from the inside. Consistent with someone, let's say this is a gun, consistent with someone wanting to look shot so they take their hand out and just shoot themselves right here. Right? So the prosecution believes her wounds are fake and that she turned around, shot her kids. Right? Then drove to the hospital. Right? The angles at which the kids are shot seem to indicate that they're all shot from the driver's seat of the vehicle. Now let me say this. At trial, after her eight-year-old had undergone therapy and talked with authorities for a protracted period of time, the eight-year-old at trial, she may have been nine at the time of the trial, then testified that mommy shot her and the other two kids. This case has an added strange wrinkle because after Diane Downs is sentenced to life, the prosecutor then adopts both surviving children. Right now, let me say this. There's a huge problem with this case. It's big. The prosecution's theory of the crime is not supported by the evidence. I don't know whether Diane Downs is guilty or innocent, but I believe I know that there's not enough evidence in this case to convict her beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's talk about it. The first problem in the prosecution's case is that the timeline doesn't add up. Understand, the police have never found the murder weapon. Never. Right? The shooting of the kids is so recent that two of the three are still alive with big time gunshot wounds, right? The kind that paralyzed the boy, right? The kids have just been shot. Where's the murder weapon? What time does Diane Downs have to get rid of the murder weapon? Understand this was a big case. The state of Oregon searched between the crime scene where bullet casings are found on Old Mohawk Road and the hospital. Right? How did Diane Downs get rid of the murder weapon? Where is it? 
what time did she have to do it? Right? There simply isn't enough time to ditch the gun and save the kids, especially when it's the prosecution that wants you to believe that she drove to the hospital at between 5 and 7 miles per hour. If she's engaged in time-consuming activities like that, right, the prosecution's theory is she drove slowly to make sure her kids expired. Then what time did she have to ditch the weapon? Where is it? Let me go one step further. If the daughter is alert enough in the car, if she's awake enough in the car, to testify at trial that mom shot her. Then where is the testimony as to how mom got rid of the murder weapon? Where is it? The timeline doesn't match up. Let's go one step further. The prosecution theory Right? It's a bit sexist, isn't it? It's that Diane Downs is so in love with her married boyfriend that she's willing to kill her own kids to be with him. Well, here's the problem. The boyfriend's in a different state. The boyfriend's in Arizona. This crime takes place in Oregon. What's Diane Downs doing in Oregon? She's moved 1,200 miles away from Arizona to Oregon to get away from that relationship. That relationship is over. The guy's 1,200 miles away. The prosecution's theory seems to be lacking in facts, doesn't it? She had an affair with a married man. If you believe the prosecution, she was someone who got around a bit. Her ex-husband claimed she used to bed hop. Right? Let me just point out that if this married man is just the latest affair she's had, in my opinion, that makes it less likely that this affair is going to be the affair that she kills for. More importantly, if she's the one moving away to a different state to end that affair, then isn't it inconsistent with the prosecution's theory that she still wants to be in the affair? That affair is already over. There's a further bombshell. The argument is that the guy she had the affair with, the one who's 1,200 miles away, didn't want kids. Well, Diane Downs is pregnant. In other words, killing her three kids doesn't end the kid problem. Right after this crime takes place, Diane Downs actually gives birth to a daughter. Right? And so, the no kids boyfriend argument that held sway with the jury years ago <clears throat> really is off base. Right? It's questionable at best. Van Downs has consistently maintained that that affair was over. Right? The prosecution had an accused who was female who they found out had been sleeping with a married man earlier in a different state. Somehow they wove that into their theory of the prosecution. You should look at that with the raised eyebrow. The guy's not even local. Understand too, the reason for her killing her kids to be child free for a guy who didn't want children is contradicted by the fact that she was pregnant at the time the crime occur. Now let's talk about the forensic problems with the case and understand they are major. Prosecution's theory. Diane Downs 
shoots her three kids from the pass excuse me from the driver's seat of the vehicle right all close range right bang 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 all close range where's the gunpowder residue on her hands would it surprise you to learn that Diane Downs was actually tested for gunpowder residue and it came back negative think about it if she's the shooter at close range wouldn't there be some gunpowder residue on her let me point out too this is in a closed environment right this is in a automobile we know the windows are up because there's blood on the windows when she pulls up to the hospital there's no gunpowder residue on her hands now let's go one step further let's say she's thought this out and has planned this crime maybe she's wearing gloves maybe she's taken off the gloves right somehow magically ditched the gloves the same way she ditched the gun in the short time window that fits into the prosecution's theory here's the problem there's no testimony that she had gloves <clears throat> right and keep in mind it's troubling because the eight, the eight-year-old testifies that mommy shot her if the eight-year-old saw the crime, where's the testimony to make the crime fit the evidence? There's no testimony of any gloves. There's no testimony of her having a towel or a handkerchief in her hand that she uses to prevent right gunpowder residue from getting all over her. Understand, too. There's blood on the ceiling of the car. There's blood on the windows of the car. Where is the blood spatter on Diane Downs? She's at the hospital. Nobody notices any blood on her apart from her own wound. Right? Where's the blood? If you shoot three people at close range as the prosecution is alleging here why is there no blood on you inside the car is bloody there's no blood on her right there are other problems in this case you know, the prosecution had a real fancy theory on the actual murder weapon used in the crime. It was supposed to be some gun that Diane Downs had access to at some time in the past. Understand that gun actually turned up in a drug raid. Right? Guns have serial numbers. Authorities then tested that gun extensively to see if it was used in this crime it was not in other words the alleged murder weapon turned out to not be the alleged murder weapon so you have a case here just looking at it objectively where you have an accused who doesn't have gunpowder residue who doesn't have blood splatter right in a crime that has a witness who can't give details as to the accused wearing gloves to prevent gunpowder residue who can't give details to fill out the timeline right how did downs after killing kids in the car then driving five to seven miles an hour to the hospital that's the prosecution's version how did she get rid of the gun 
and whatever items she had, and there's no testimony of any such items, that would have protected her from getting gunpowder residue on herself and blood splatter on herself, right? There's no testimony about any change of clothes. Keep in mind, Diane Downs had just left a couple's home. They know what clothes she was wearing. There's no evidence of any change of clothes. She's at the hospital. There's no blood splatter. Now we find out that the murder weapon's not even the murder weapon. Isn't this a case where you have a prosecution theory, right? Oh, she wanted to get with her married ex-boyfriend. That doesn't even fit the location of the crime, right? Oh, he's in another state. And that doesn't even fit the fact that she's pregnant. So Diane Downs came up for a parole, and she told the parole board, and keep in mind, she's been in prison now more than 30 years, but she told the parole board when she came up, almost 30 years after she was incarcerated, look, I can't admit to this crime. I didn't do it. Right? She even said, look, I know it would help my chances of getting parole to admit to the crime, but I can't because I didn't do it. I didn't kill my kids. Right? Understand, too, there are other things going on in the background. There's actually a white male with long hair who fits the description of the assailant who apparently told multiple people that he was the stranger who did the shooting. Now I don't know whether he is credible or not. I don't know whatever happened to him, but what I would like for you to do was to Google this case and to read the websites on it. Right? Also, look into Downs' daughter. Right? Understand kids can be impressionable witnesses. I don't like the idea of an eight-year-old suddenly coming up with a coherent recollection of what happened the night of the crime at some later date right after talking with therapists and people about what may have happened right you can elicit false memories right literature is replete with people who have been influenced after an event into believing a certain version of facts, right? As you read into the eight-year-old's recollection, just ask yourself, you know, how come the eight-year-old can't explain the absence of gunpowder residue, right? How does the eight-year-old's version of events fit into the timeline? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here in the comment section to this video. If there are websites or developing breaking news that you want to share with all of us, I hope you do so in the comment section to this video. Again, I don't know if Diane Downs is guilty or innocent. But I would argue to you that there isn't the evidence here to convict her beyond a reasonable doubt. Were I a member of the jury, I would have had to have voted not guilty. The state bears the burden of proving that you did the crime. Jurors shouldn't speculate. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.